In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We are living through worrying times. But into our uncertainties and our suffering comes the love of God. As we walk the way of the cross during this time of conflict, we unite our prayers with those of all people of goodwill. We begin this way of the cross by using the words that Pope Francis used at the general audience this week. Forgive us for war, O Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us sinners. Lord Jesus, born the shadow of bombs falling on Kiev, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, who died in a mother's arms in a bunker in Kharkiv, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, a 20-year-old sent to the front lines, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, who still behold armed hands in the shadow of your cross, have mercy on us. Forgive us, O Lord. Forgive us if we are not satisfied with the nails with which we crucified your hands as we continue to slate our thirst with the blood of those mauled by weapons. Forgive us if these hands which you created to tend have been transformed into instruments of death. Forgive us, O Lord, if we continue to kill our brother. Forgive us if we continue like Cain to pick up the stones of our fields to kill Abel. Forgive us if we continue to justify our cruelty with our labours, if we legitimise the brutality of our actions with our pain. Forgive us for war, O Lord. Forgive us for war. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you, hold fast the hand of Cain, illumine our consciences, may our will not be done, abandon us not to our own actions, stop us, O Lord, stop us. And when you have held back the hand of Cain, care also for him, he is our brother. O oh Lord, put a halt to the violence. Stop us, O oh Lord. Amen. The first station. Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Washing his hands of innocent blood, Pilate condemns Jesus to death. World leaders wash their hands of innocent blood. Collateral damage, unfortunate victims of friendly fire. Lord, forgive your people. Bring those who have died into the light of your presence. Enfold them in your eternal mercy and love. The second station. Jesus receives the cross. Taking upon himself the burden of unwarranted suffering, Jesus shares the lot of all those who are overburdened. So many were already burdened with poverty and illness, and now have the burdens of fear of death or severe injury. 
fear of what will happen to loved ones, what will happen to their future. Lord, you share the burdens of those who are overwhelmed by fear and anguish of heart. Show us ways in which we can share their burden, to be in solidarity with them, our brothers and sisters. The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. The burden of the cross becomes too great and Jesus falls. People are scrabbling for food, but not strong enough to get to the front of the queue. They are pushed aside, the children, the weak, the frail, the elderly. They fall and the food disappears into the hands of the strong, or those who will sell it to them at extortionate prices. Their strength is further sapped, their weakness increases, in the dust they despair. Lord, our brothers and sisters fall, too weak to stand up to the strong. Help us to support them through the work of agencies who can work alongside, protecting the weak, raising the lowly. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. Where else can a mother be? Drawn to the suffering of her child, Mary meets her son. So many mothers watching children die from cancer, with no access to drugs to alleviate their suffering. Mothers cowering over their children, using their own bodies to try and protect them from bombs and bullets. Pregnant women who are killed before meeting their unborn children. Lord, you looked into the eyes of your mother and saw how your suffering increased the anguish of her heart. Yet she would not leave you. She would not abandon you. May her mother's heart reach out in love to all the mothers whose hearts are broken or filled with fear for their children. The fifth station. The cross is laid upon Simon of Cyrene. Seeing Jesus' increasing weakness, Simon of Cyrene is pressed into help carry the cross. A man in the crowd, one who did not even know Jesus, is forced to share his burden. How many, whose names we may never know, are tonight sharing the burdens of suffering? Soldiers become brothers, sharing the fear, the grief, striving to fight for peace, trying to show a human face in an inhuman war. Lord, you accepted the strength of another to share your intolerable burden. Bless those who are using their strength to defend the weak, those who are sharing the burdens of those unable to carry them alone. Strengthen their sense of purpose. Temper their determination to succeed with compassion. The 
the sixth station. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. A woman, overwhelmed with pity, comes from the crowd and wipes the face of Jesus. Women, wiping the tears of those who are broken-hearted, tending the wounds of those who are injured and in pain, going into places of danger to love and serve those in great need. Lord, the tenderness of Veronica's gesture, simple and loving, reflected in countless simple gestures of loving service. Bless those who show the courage to come forward and be seen. Protect them as they show mercy and compassion for your people. The seventh station. Jesus falls the second time. The burden of the cross again overwhelms, and Jesus falls a second time. How often can we pick ourselves up and start again? A people dominated by fear oppressed and afraid, knowing the fate of those who tried to stay, take a stand before them. Where do they get the courage to believe in their future and to act in that belief that this time, this time it will succeed? Lord, the people enduring conflict are bruised and battered and some are without hope. Raise their eyes to a new future. Give them confidence in their own strength and belief that they can make a difference for themselves, for their future. The eighth station, the women of Jerusalem mourn for Jesus. Mourning, weeping, wailing, keening. The sound of grief that fills homes, streets, hospitals and bomb sites. Rachel weeps again for her children and cannot be comforted. Lord, you told the women of Jerusalem to weep not for you, but for themselves and their children. In Jerusalem, in Kiev, in Mariupol, in the Yemen, in so many places. And now they do. Words spoken here cannot bring consolation, but take our love and our prayer. Add it to your own, and let the little, little we can offer be of some comfort and support to those left distraught and broken. The Ninth Station. Jesus Falls the Third Time. Weakened beyond endurance, Jesus falls for the third time. There will be some who will be overcome with despair, whose souls are ground down into the dust, for whom the prospect of rising to new challenges is beyond their strength, beyond wildest hopes. Lord, you know the depths of utter fatigue, the sense of utter failure. 
Infuse your love and hope into the hearts of those who despair of beginning again, for whom future happiness is glimpsed only through the awareness of pain yet to come. Help us too to believe that we can make a difference. When all seems darkness, despair, and repeated failure. The Tenth Station Jesus is stripped of his garments. A people has been stripped of everything, their dignity lost in years of sanctions, their hope by years of oppression, and their grief, their suffering shown on primetime television, their wounds visible for the world to see. Some view with compassion others with idle curiosity, and from a few, even unwholesome gloating, that this is the price of success. Lord, a people stands naked before the world's gaze. Let that gaze be compassionate. May their suffering invoke in us a desire to ease their suffering and the will to fight for peace with justice in Ukraine and in the whole world. The Eleventh Station Jesus is nailed to the cross. Stories of great cruelty inflicted on others, torture, random killings, people with deep, cruel scars, minds haunted by memories to share, nails driven through minds and hearts, by pinning them to, to terror, to fear, to despair. Lord, we cannot begin to imagine the pain you endured, but your pain makes your compassion real for those who have suffered unimaginable agony. Pour your healing love over them. Enfold them in your mercy. Give them a sense of security so that the wounds inflicted on body, mind and spirit can slowly be healed and, like yours, become signs of glory, of witness to the triumph of good over evil. The Twelfth Station Jesus dies on the cross. So many deaths, some swift and unexpected, some slow and lingering. Death, no respecter of age, killing the elderly and the frail, young soldiers, men and women in the prime of life children, and babies yet unborn. Lord, death feels final. Sudden death leaves us stunned and reeling. Our hearts bleed for those who suffer long, slow decline. We entrust the souls of all who have died in war to your mercy. We ask you who walked through the veil of death to be there to meet them and lead them home. The 
the thirteenth station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. A mother in grief, holding her dead child. Friends standing in disbelief that the one they have loved has died. Long moments of weeping, sighing, longing to bring them back to life, but not back to the suffering. Never back to the suffering. Lord, these moments of loss as a reality that the one we love is no longer there. The hand we touch is cold, the heart is still. May those who mourn find comfort in the love of family and friends. May the love of your mother who held you in her arms bring them comfort. May our compassion transcend the distance that separates us, and, in the solidarity of humanity, touch their souls with our love. The Thirteenth Station Jesus is placed into the tomb. The final glimpse of the one who has been so loved. The last touch and then the end. A hasty burial with mourners. A lonely cremation in a burnt out tank. The moment when death becomes reality. The moment of parting. The moment of walking away. To try and pick up the pieces and rebuild a life. Lord, so many people are standing by gravesides, wondering how to rebuild life without the one they love. May they find hope in the midst of their grief, a conviction that their loved one did not die in vain, and that they are safe free from pain and fear, at rest in God for ever. In the rubble and carnage of war, what hope can we find? In the suffering and despair of humanity, how can we believe in the future? In the face of death, how can we believe in resurrection? Lord, at times like these, our faith can be tested to the full. We share the desolation of people torn apart by suffering and wonder whether life is really stronger than death. Yet you have walked through death to new life. Your family and friends bore witness to your resurrection. We trust your word and their witness and look to the future with confidence that the cause of all the pain in the world is sin. But all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom.